And here we are. Welcome, everyone, to Celebrity Josh, which is the name of my podcast, which I don't like. I'll change it at some point, but that's what it is for now. And I am Josh Rackless. I also don't like my own name. Hard to spell, hard to remember. Maybe uh, Sheila will have some ideas for a new name for me. And uh, speaking of names, my guest has a very long name here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot at it. Sheila Farragher Gemma. Uh, pretty close. Sheila Farragher Gemma. <laughs> you can go with FG though. That's easier as well. Um, so, but you and if you want my name, you can have it. But I think your name's probably a bit better. <laughs> it's a little easier. Yeah. No, that doesn't. Uh, that wouldn't be an improvement. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I my dream is to have like. A name with just like one syllable, like Sting or Pink. So then people, yeah. I, I feel like. People, Are you a rock star? Can you, you like, can you pull it off totally or no? <laughs> well, that's the problem because I'm kind of a comedian and I feel like, you know, if you're a rock star, you can, hey, I'm Sting, like, or I'm Slash, like it, it works. But if you're like. Or like a symbol, up, like Prince, you know? Yeah. But if you're a comedian and you're coming at next up on stage, Spark or, you know, or like it's <laughs> <Sparky>. like. Sparky. <laughs> yeah, you just sound like an idiot. Like, who do you. Or, or like, who's. I don't know, Tyler, the creator, he's a rapper, Megan, the stallion, like all this stuff, you can get away with that. But if, well, actually, no, they don't, they aren't good examples because they're, they're too many syllables. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can't think of a, com like, a comedian that's got like a cool little name that you can get away with without looking ridiculous. <laughs> and I also want my name, like I still have hopes that might, I might be cast as James Bond one day and I don't want to have a name that's kind of, like I want it to look good on the poster, not be like, uh, you know, actually, I like it. Rackless. Josh uh, Rackless. <laughs> it works. Can, I, it's not. Yeah. People say, oh, I like your name. Like, yeah, but nobody. I mean, I, I worked for a woman for 15 years and, and she was always like Josh Retchlees. And I'm like, no, uh, <laughs> like even people who know me don't know how to say it. And we don't know how to say it. Like it should it should probably be Rackless. But we say <laughs> yeah, that just sounds like you're about to throw up, though. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just so my, my new name or well, I've got a few options. I forgot. Uh, there was one I keep forgetting up. Oh yeah, ramble. Because I I was uh, taking some stand up classes over the winter, and then the teacher was like, "Oh, you ramble. I like how you ramble." I'm like, "Ramble, that's cool." That is kind of cool. Yeah. So ramble's one option. I've also been liking the name Spark for some reason because it's just like it's like a pink. It's like short, and it's kind of like I don't know. It's just kind of cool. And yeah. then, but I was trying to think. I want something visual. But then I, I tried typing in Spark last week as an like to see what emoji would come up, and there yep. actually is an emoji, and the emoji looks like the letter S. I'm like, oh my god, it's so perfect, like it's like a spark, but it looks like the S. So I'm like, yeah, that one. yeah. But I'll but I'll never get Spark.com, so I've registered SparkTheGenius.com, and that way it's that, like a name. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. You know, it's still you're still Spark, and then you just have the the title after it. Exactly. You add something so you can get the dot com and the social media things. Yeah. And then, and then it's double whammy because it's like I am Spark the Genius, but it's also like my mantra. You should spark the genius. It's so because I figured it's good if people are going to say your name all the time and read it all the time. What if it was also an inspirational saying? So it was giving it's them your a call to action. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cool. But then I was lying in bed this morning going, oh, maybe it's more like spark success because then it like two, it's like one syllable less and it's two S's. But um, SparkSuccess.com is taken, so. Yeah, no, I but, like Spark the Genius. I like that because it's it's um, it's a name and it's a verb. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm glad somebody appreciates it. <laughs> Every time I mention it on my social media or I mention it to my aunt, she's like, "I'm not going to call you Spark." I'm like, "Well, we'll see." <laughs> I just might not answer that. If you get like so famous, they will because you'll be like, "I don't answer to anything but Spark." <laughs> exactly. That's that's I need to get that famous where people will have to talk, tell me, call me whatever. I want to be called. Uh, what was the one thing? Oh, yeah, this morning. OK, so I saw this comedian on Instagram, this girl. Uh, I don't know. She, she does these skits. She's like, I'm Uber Karen. And then she's always got like another comedian in the back and, and films it as if it's some kind of funny interaction between her. And I was like, what could I what could I be doing? Like, I don't have a lot of friends or, that I could meet with in person. But OK, I could do something like on Skype or something like this. And then maybe it's me being a life coach. So I'm Spark the Genius and I'm always solving somebody's problem. But I'm an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like spark plugs, spark an idea. It's like there's there's so much action behind spark. It's it's yeah. I, I like it a lot. Okay, good. Because I don't think I see I, like it's taken a lot. Like I I went past a store called Spark Beer late, lately. Like they've got some and it's Spark Beer. That's the domain they have. Yeah. And there's and uh, and there is a Spark 
I don't think I can get it on Twitter because I think there's a girl who has a marketing agency called Spark the Genius, but whatever. All right, we, I've got. I, you sound like you're from. Are you in Australia? No, Ireland. Irish. I, oh, man. Yeah, I'm actually in Boston though, um, but yeah, I'm Irish. Well, I should have known that. I've I've been doing. Uh, there was a guy in my comedy class uh, who's from Ireland, and actually, I was just on his open mic, and I. I made fun of his accent for like an hour. Going, oh, uh, Lucky Charms or whatever. So and I have I, to go now. Bye. Yeah. No, no, it's, it was self-deprecating how I'm an idiot and I don't really understand. Um, I can do a Scottish accent, though, because I, yeah. I trained for that for a commercial. Right. Look at me. I'm Scottish. That's my Scottish <laughs> accent. Uh, okay, so you are in, you're, you're from Ireland, but you're in Boston. Yep. And, uh, and what would be like your little your little bio you would give someone to say like who you are and what you do. Yeah. So, um, uh, what I do is I help pl platform owners find sponsors for their platforms. And I've kind of had a long, um, complicated and entrepreneurial life, I guess, uh, done a whole bunch of things It all started when I first had my first child and didn't want to continue working. I didn't mind the working part, but working for someone I didn't want to do. So, um, I branched off on my own and had a few businesses, sold a couple, had a couple of disasters and this is kind of what I do today. So is this one of the disasters or is this the um, big one? Hopefully not. We're, we're right. still in the middle of this one. So hopefully it's not going to be a disaster. Okay. Um, so far it's gone well. I've been doing, like I've been actively doing sponsorship sales for people for about 10 years. And then with COVID and everything, when everything shut down, I created products around it. And now I teach what I do and coach it. Um, so not so much in the field anymore. Um, a little bit. I have a few clients I still work with, but I'm not looking for new clients. I'm just looking to um, kind of teach other people what I do. Yeah, well, that seems to be, I mean, from everything I've <clears throat> been hearing and reading for the past couple of years now, like it's all about teaching other people what you do, because I guess that's more scalable because you can only you've only got so much time to have your own clients. But if you well, can, that's exactly it. And and like I'm constantly saying no to people as soon as people hear what I do, they're like, oh, my God, can you do that for me? And it's like I can, but I can't because, yeah. you know, there's only so much you can take on and it's, yeah. it's a lot. So um, I'm hoping to build like a. a bunch of kind of like sponsor heroes that I can see that's my name for them don't know if it's going to stick or not but sponsor heroes that I can dispatch out into the world and they can find sponsors for people and I'll just teach them how to do it no that's good because I've been that's my other thing other than my own name I've been trying to think of a name like for my community or something that you would give that it's not the company it's the people they take on the name like I yeah I, yeah it's I, hard I, isn't it yeah it's really because every name's taken like I read about how this woman was doing uh what's she doing uh i guess business coaching but she was just using her own name jennifer something but then she changed her name to like i think it was lady boss or something and now it's yeah. like oh, oh I'll, i know her yeah she's really good yeah. and so all, all her team there were all lady bosses hashtag lady boss i've got on my shirt lady boss like it's yeah. a, another call to action like you want people to feel good about it so and I'm you're always... creating kind of a movement as well so from a marketing yeah. point of view it's really really clever yeah you know people kind of really um uh, identify with you know I'm at this and they they feel like they found their place exactly so that's that's why uh you know the the sponsor heroes is a good idea because I keep looking at the celebrities who have their own teams like uh or their a name for their community like um Lady Gaga she has the little monsters or you know yeah and, but Swifties, Taylor Swift <laughs> yeah exactly so then I'm like okay well, would my followers be Sparkies like <laughs> Uh, it sounds like a little kid. <laughs> so, hey, Sparky. Sparkies. Or are they little geniuses? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe geniuses, but that one's taken. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> a, and that was a good movie. Uh, not that I've seen it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, you're, so that's good. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, all, all the, just when I was uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was in Florida and I was in a hotel and I was watching these Tony Robbins, uh, Dean Graciosi webinars. And, and yeah. their whole thing now is teaching people. Uh, the mastermind guess, thing yeah they're soft yeah i got and, sucked into that too <laughs> uh, so I, it's a great i mean it's a great way to build your business if you have that kind of essential model of you know you create a product and you have a coaching group and then you have a higher end mastermind group and i belong to masterminds and they're i mean the value you get is huge and it's usually it's it's from the person running it but it's really from the people in the room as well and the connections and the sharing of ideas is just like you you come away with like something that you're just like oh my god mind blown and it might be something simple but you just never saw it before that's what i think i think like there's only so much the guru or whatever will teach you but it's just being in that community of like-minded people that 
you know, can bounce ideas off each other and maybe yeah. work with them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what gives me confidence that like I don't have to know everything. I'll just start a community, like a Facebook yeah. group, and then everybody will join, and I'll just be like, yeah, it's a thousand dollars a month, and you guys can talk amongst yourselves. And... <laughs> well, you, you have to do a little bit more, but but it, you're absolutely right though, because it's um it's like on all of these ascension models, the further you go up, the less work you have to do. So in the beginning, like you're you're working your ass off, you're trying to get people in, you're sending out emails, you're doing all this stuff, and by the end, you have these clients who are just like, you know, where do I send the check? Or not that we're sending checks anymore, but yeah, it's just so such an easier thing because they're, they're coming to you a little bit for your expertise but really more for the community that you've built so that's all the hard work you've kind of done on the back end to create this so it's a, it's a really good model it works so how do you uh like how, how how do you teach like do you do you have masterminds like are there sponsor heroes groups or um, we're, we're getting there. I have like a product that I created, um, kind of at the beginning of this year. Um, I have like a small group of people that I'm still very small. Yeah. Um, but you know, the goal is to have kind of that end mastermind type thing going as well. Um, you know, to just, uh, to really get like it, it's just it's it's monetarily um value wise for them everything it's it's just a really good thing and um honestly it's what i love about it as well is the teacher usually learns more or the expert learns more by going through this just by because you know the way you do things and you, you have your own little way and you do them and you kind of have the blinders on because this is how i've always done it and yep. then suddenly you see somebody kind of doing it a different way and you're like oh I, I wasn't even open to that concept because I just was like, I'm so stuck in my way of doing things. Mm. So you can really learn a lot from it yourself as well. Oh, for sure. I've heard like lots of professors say they learn more from their students than they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then I know, and also the people, uh, like I've been listening to a lot of James Altucher lately, and he talks a lot about how if you start teaching other people, like just manually one-on-one -on -one to do what you do kind of thing, you'll realize, oh, right, this is what they need to see or hear or I hadn't thought of this because I did this my way or I started young. And then yeah, go... and, and sometimes as well, it's um, like I found when I started creating this product, I'd go back to ten, me 10 years ago when I started doing this mm. because it's like driving a car. So when you get in your car, you don't like look at the pedals and go ABC, accelerate, brake, clutch if you have a clutch. You, yeah. you don't drive like that. You just get in the car and you go. Whereas that very first time you started driving, you were probably like terrified and yeah. doing five miles an hour for the first, you know, hour <laughs> trying to yeah. figure out just how to do it. And you kind of have to bring yourself back to that place, figure out what it was that you needed then, um, because now so much of it is second nature that you just you're, you're you know, you're unconsciously competent. Yeah. Yeah. So are you teaching people? to find sponsors for their own platform or teaching people to teach other people to find sponsors for a platform? Um, so probably the first thing, um, so a lot of platform owners though probably aren't going to be my client. They're probably going to send me somebody who works for them. Because if you think of the entrepreneur, like think of our Tony Robbins, do you think he's out there trying to find sponsors? He's, you no. know, not, not that he's my client by any means. I would love yeah. if he was, but he isn't. Tony, if you're listening, this is my name. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying hi to him too. Sometimes yeah. he asks you to message me back on Instagram, so I feel like I've got a connection to him. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's like a lot of platform owners, like event owners, podcast owners. They, it's probably something they don't want to do themselves, but there'll be there'll be somebody on their team that um, come in and do the actual work. So that, that they're my first contact. Some of them do. I'm working with some of them that that you know, yeah, I want to learn this first myself anyway. Um, but usually it's kind of a team member that I'm, I'm training. Cool. So what's, so what is a platform? Like, what would that be? So a platform, um, basically is where you get your message out. So for you, this is your platform. You, you're on a podcast or maybe one of your platforms may have many. Um, so it can be a podcast. It can be live events, virtual events, newsletters, even email marketing, whatever, um, you're using to get in front of your, um, your clients or your guests or your, you know, students or whatever you call your people, mm -hmm. your my, sparkies. My sparkies, exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. And then, and so you, you would teach me how to get sponsors. Right. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I imagine that most podcasters would just be them, like, especially if they don't have sponsors yet, like they're not necessarily going to have a team where I'll, I'll leave this to my sponsor development person or something. Yeah. But well, sometimes yeah. they'll have a VA or they'll have somebody who's kind of helping them with the, the, kind of the the repetitive work that right, maybe right. you don't need to do like the editing the sending out the emails and the invites and that kind of stuff yeah yeah i guess i should get on that i mean at some point i'll 
I'll do it, it. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 always hard to know when you do that as well. It's like you know, yeah. am I big enough to hire someone to do this? It's something I can do myself. But the time I'm spending doing this myself is time I could be like working on higher end stuff, and you know, yeah. it's always a conundrum. <laughs> Yeah, I read uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week a few years ago, and it's all about get a VA, like just yeah. to do dentist appointments or who knows what, like anything you can take away from. Because a lot of the stuff I do, like, I don't know, just going through my emails or swiping through profiles on Facebook dating, I'm like, I should hire a VA to do this. Like, why am I sitting here? <laughs> VA, give me a date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, um, I did a lot of work um, on emails at one point. I had an email coach for about four years. And like one of the things they tell you in the very beginning is to track like literally everything you do for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. So you just have a piece of paper and write down, you know, 15 minutes scrolling on Facebook for a date, you know, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what are the things you're doing or an hour or whatever. Um, and then look at your time and say, okay, so what do what of these things do I actually need to do or what could I you know farm out to yeah. somebody else yeah that would be huge I mean even just I mean just today I sort of woke up at 7 30 I'm like oh, I gotta do this interview in an hour and a half and then next time I look at my phone it's like 8 45 I'm like oh my god so what happened to that hour and 15 minutes sort of yeah seriously <laughs> like I, I I was like maybe I can get another hour of sleep but I knew at this point there was not gonna be more sleep I finally went to bed sort of on time last night but then I woke up at 1 a.m. and my CPAP machine was like making this little weird oh, engine no. noise. I'm like, are you no. kidding me? This is ridiculous. Wow. So I'm covering it with blankets to try and then I'm like, oh, I can still hear it. Screw it. I'm going to try to breathe on my own. So there's always some disaster. But yeah, every day, like even at around nine o'clock, OK, time for bed. Oh, it's midnight. So that's another three hours that like <laughs> where did they go? Yeah. And you can't get them back. That's the problem. Like, I mean, money, you can spend money and you can make more money. But time, you know, you can't make more time. I know I keep uh, yeah Warren Buffett always I mean everybody it's true I mean every, you know even Gary Vee yesterday was like if once you realize that uh, you know time is you know you talk to a 90 year old and they're like time has run out and it's, I'm like yeah. I know I know I don't need to hear that I, just, I know and it speeds up as well I find the older I get the the more it speeds up I'm like remember as a kid the summer holidays or something they went on forever like they lasted three years it was awesome you know, yeah. when am I going to turn 10? I've been nine forever. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I know. I was reading about, I guess, the science behind that. And it said something about how it's because when you're a kid, you're always doing interesting things. Like there's always something new. You're going to school every day or your camp and camp is like a new thing every day. And yeah, and, and you're older. It's kind of just this routine. So it feels like, oh, I just sort of got up and you know, scroll through Instagram for two years or something. So maybe it's part of that, but maybe there's something in your brain that time speeds up. Cause that's, cause I'm terrified now. Yeah. I used to be like, Oh, the summer, the summer would last forever. Like I keep thinking every day I think about my trip to Europe. That was just like a month or, or my frosh week or, or my university years. It was only four years and I've done What's nothing. A frosh in the week? Uh, that's like what, uh, like when you're a freshman at university, it's the first week of school. Oh yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And it's, and I'm sort of living in that mindset still. Like I just think about it all the time. But I'm like, even university was only four years for me, and I haven't done anything in the past four years. And I'm already scared that, like, it's rushing to my next birthday already in November. And then I'm like, okay, and then the next one, and then oh my god, like I'm just, I, I, the summer's already racing by, and I, I felt like this was the summer I'm going to appreciate. I'm going to go to the beach every day. I'm going to savor it. And I'm like, it's already almost over. I'm like. Oh my God! So I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to deal with that. I guess you just have to. And the only I thing, I don't know. Maybe, maybe kind of schedule, like maybe not. Don't take it all on, but if it's the beach, maybe schedule one day a week that you go to the beach. Or yeah, I don't even, know, and hope it doesn't rain that day. <laughs> I know I don't even really care about the beach. Like why well, I was yeah. there cleaning up litter last week, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I like picking up litter. I just like the idea. I don't know. I don't know what to do to hold on to. But even Dean Graciosi is like, a time flies by. Look how old my kids are now. You got to. I'm like, uh. Yeah. None, of, none of that seems to help, but I guess the only thing think about it. <laughs> yeah, I guess the only thing that gives me comfort is that, well, it's time's passing for everyone. Like Tom Cruise is going to be a year older in a year too, so it's like not, there's nobody that's frozen in time. Yeah. And then I think, oh, I wish I was 18. Well, even an 18 year old will be 19 next year. Like it's yeah. Nobody's. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I <laughs> I keep I keep wondering like if I got super Tony Robbins rich or Jeff Bezos rich, would I then be happy? Like are they sitting going, yeah, I love it. Like I can just get massages all day or I don't know or is everybody just sort of like ah I think everyone's kind of ah <laughs> great uh all right well it's okay so sponsors well that's I mean that's the big thing that everybody wants now like that's the dream because like unless you have your own 
kind of product, like your course that you're selling or something. You need to be able, and, and that's actually what I was thinking I should make my podcast about in, in a way, because you know, I'm just interviewing random people, but what I seem to be really interested in is content creation, but how to monetize it so that you can make a living from creating your art or your podcast or whatever it is that, that you love doing. Yeah, yeah. And sponsors are like a big thing, because I didn't even realize, I was talking, my friend Lee Romanov is like this millionaire, she made all this money online selling a, an insurance referral website to a, a media company, and, oh, wow. and she's always talking about like, I was like, oh, I want to have a radio show. She's like, well, you can buy your own radio show. You can buy your own TV show. Like, if you had a sponsor that would pay 5000 an episode or whatever, then you just buy the airtime. And that's what yeah. she did. She had her own hour show on TV because she had a car insurance sponsor. And I was like, all right. So if you can get sponsors, I don't have to wait for a radio station to hire me as their morning zoo guy. Like, I'd just be like, no, it's the, it's the Josh Rackless hour, and I'm just paying. But it kind of so, like, money and sponsors can even buy you the fame that you want. It doesn't have to go yeah. down. Um, yeah, I think the first thing is to figure out what it is that you want, which I think is really difficult for mm. all of us. What, yes. what do you actually want? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's the problem. Like, people keep saying, what, you know, what do you want to do? And I always thought, well, I want to be a famous comedian. And I've tried doing some comedy recently, but I'm like, oh, that's not realistic. And it's not as much fun as I thought. And I'm like, oh, I should write a screenplay. Well, I wrote a screenplay. I won an award for it 10 years ago, but I never sat down to make changes to it. And it's like, yeah, what? I don't know. I don't know what any, I guess then we just you know, just numb ourselves by scrolling through YouTube and <laughs> time. Um, so what would be like, can you give any like uh, secret tips on, on how to get a sponsor or like the kind of things that you teach or whatever? Yeah, of course. Um, so the thing you want to um, first of all figure out is like, uh, what are you bringing to the sponsor? Like a lot of people start the other way around, kind of like how much can I make or blah, blah, blah. So you yeah. want to um, like, what is it that you're offering the sponsor? You want to find someone that's like really strategic and the way i kind of explain it is that um you know whatever it is you're doing so you're doing a podcast here um, people are coming and listening to your podcast because they're looking for some sort of transformation uh, maybe it's to learn about you know comedy and being a comedian maybe it's to just like learn about other people's lives and try and fit it into theirs and figure out you know what their solution is what, whatever it is whatever that transformation is if you can bring in a sponsor that's going to kind of help with that transformation for them as well that's going to be like a really good fit so you're looking for that like correct fit you know to curate sponsors that are going to really help your listeners um get to wherever it is that they're trying to get through through you if that makes sense yeah yeah so like if you know i decide okay my podcast is about helping people monetize their creative content exactly sponsored yeah. by sheila because there Sheila, of course, and then I get like, you know, 20% of, you know, use promo code Celebrity Josh. And yes, <laughs> you got it. I'll send you the contract over in five minutes. Great. <laughs> Excellent. See that, see, that would be a good match because I listen to a lot of podcasts and the, there seems to be a number of, of businesses that just sponsor podcasts. So they're on everything. Like, uh, you know, I listen to the Ben Shapiro show all the time and he's uh, every day. He's like uh, rock auto. It's like buy your auto yeah. parts online or um, policy geniuses for life insurance, or or there's some cell company. But I hear those sponsors on every podcast I listen to. So clearly these guys have just looked up the top podcast, whatever. And so it has nothing to do with anything. Like it sounds- Yeah, and, and some like some sponsors are looking for kind of like, you know, policy genius, I'm assuming is some sort of insurance that, you know, most yeah. people need insurance. So they have like this big broad range of um, what they're looking for. Um, so they're probably like throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall just to find yeah. what's going to stick. Um, you know, where I think the money really is, is if you kind of drill down further and um, find a company that um, like, you know, you're talking about content cre creation. So maybe like a ClickFunnels or an Infusionsoft or something like that, but a company that they're going to need, that they're going to, you know, house their 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 product on that, um, uh, you know, will pay them residual money so that it makes sense for them. There's more of a um, ROI for the sponsors. So they're probably going to spend more on that, you know, if you gather that type of an audience. Yeah, because I think, you know, the shows I'm listening to are like super huge shows. Like, you know, if you, if you listen to a Joe Rogan, he just has his audiences like everyone, half the yeah, country. So, yeah, yeah. So it'll yeah. be somebody like, okay, everybody needs life insurance. But, yeah. but if they're more of a niche show, it's like, okay, this is the travel show or this is the content creation show. Okay, so... You know, Ecamm Live is this is the broadcasting software. We'll add. Yeah. We know yeah. we're hitting that target, and that's yeah. what they say. Like, if you're super niche, if you're like only doing a show about golf course management or something, well, any anybody who's selling any products to those people will pay extra. We'll, for we'll pay extra, yeah. Yeah. So anybody listening to this is, 
you know, even if it's a hundred people, they all really need golf course management software or whatever it is. Kind of exactly, thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's what I'm torn with. Cause I feel like, but I don't want to be niche. I don't want to limit myself to a thousand people. I want to, I want to be like Stephen Colbert. I want the whole world to listen to how funny I am. Yeah. So I keep, keep swinging back and forth to what's my topic. To No, there's no topic. I'm just a guy who talks to every interesting person in the world. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what the sponsors think about that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, I mean, and for them, it's going to be a numbers thing as well. It's like who you have on there, how many of them you have. So if they're kind of broad, like putting out a broad net, um, that would be good if you have a big amount of numbers. If they're kind of niche down, um, it would be good if you have like a very tight niche or niche. I never know which way to say that. Yeah, word. I like I like saying niche. And every time I hear somebody say niche, I'm like, oh, like it's yeah, like, I know it sounds like a niche. It's like <laughs> yeah, or like but or like niche the, sounds kind of very snobby, like oh niche. Yeah, it's like French, it's a filth. It's the niche that I am in. But but niche rhymes with gitch, which is like a word for underwear, and I've always hated that word as well. I'm just like, oh, that's so gross. But then all the all the gurus, they're always, you know, the riches are in the niches. Like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Pat, Pat Flynn says that the all the time. The riches like, are in the niches. I don't yeah, know the, how you'd make the that rhyme. The riches are in the niches. That's how it should be. And I googled it one time. I'm like, which is it? They're like, it's either. I'm like, don't tell me it's either one. Yeah. Like, Come on, Google, to... take a stance on something, will you? <laughs> yeah, seriously. So I'm gonna say niche. And I'm glad you agree. Nobody, nobody agrees with that one. Um, yeah. yeah. So I gotta, I gotta figure out. I guess what my niche. Is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, and then I keep looking. Well, what are the top podcasts? And like, there's some of them that are, I guess, personal development. And then I was thinking, well, I want to be the funny guy. I'd love to be just like Conan O'Brien, having funny conversations with people. But maybe if I combine it to sort of life improvement. Uh, but it's funny because I can make anything funny. So if it's funny, but you're also getting value out of it, it might be like that's yeah. kind of the unique. Well, well, think forward. Like, so when you create this mastermind, who's going to be the members? Mm, I don't know. I mean, it, that's the thing. Is I, it specifically going to be comedians? No, I mean, because I don't. I, I mean, I guess I could talk to comedians, but I don't know if that's an even a big enough audience or if I'm even, I don't even know what I'm qualified for. But I mean, the gurus say you don't have to be qualified. You can just talk to people and interview them and you're learning yourself and all that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to be a life coach, like, you know, have to, I mean, until you're a billionaire yourself, maybe nobody thinks you have the credentials to, to teach. Yeah, and what, you know and what? what I, I think we just have to give ourselves the credentials. Honestly, yeah. it's, 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 um, you know, it, it, I feel like a lot of people kind of get stuck in that. And it's um, the imposter syndrome. Um, do you read any of Russell Bronson stuff? I mean, I see his ads all the time on YouTube. Yeah. And it's like, click funnels, click funnels. I'm like, yeah, oh. I just feel yes, like. Um, Expert Secrets, if you can get it. Um, okay. I'll send you a link to it afterwards. Um, it's, a, it's a great book about exactly this. It's like how to become an expert and, you know, the whole thing is like you really just have to be kind of one step ahead of everyone else, you know, in, in, in yeah. your knowledge. Well, um, so it I, doesn't, you don't have to be like completely finished before you start. No, that's what Tim Ferriss says. It's like you just read one article about something. You Now you know more than 90 percent of people. So you're the right. Expert. Yeah. Just keep teaching them yeah. and just be. Yeah, I'm you last week, so now I can teach you and pass it on. I just don't even know what I'd be teaching. Like, like, is it is it so specific, like how to monetize creative content, or is it like how to be an effective entrepreneur, or is it how to, you know, just be successful in life and be healthy and a good relationship? Like, I, what does Tony yeah. Robbins even teach? I don't even know. Like, it's all. Yeah. I mean, but what resonates with you? I mean, what's like, what are you passionate about, or what are you aiming to do? Or yeah, I mean, I've always been creative. I always just liked. Uh, drawing drawing cartoons or I wrote little books when I was five and illustrated them and then yeah. I started doing stand-up comedy in university and comedy improv and I love making people laugh and I did a stand-up comedy contest a couple of weeks ago and I won first prize of the night so I'm going to go oh, into congratulations a and I did it last year and I didn't make it past the first round so this you know That's so I guess improvement. I, yeah so, I <laughs> so your first product can be how to go from last place to first place in one year <laughs> maybe yeah I guess and here's no. what I learned just keep your yeah. jokes shorter and that was basically it, I think, <laughs> what I figured yeah. out. Um, and so it's like, yeah, I, I guess there's that. I mean, I and I always wanted, I always thought I'd be like Woody Allen, like be famous for acting and directing in my own movies. And then because I'm famous, oh, people will come see me play the clarinet or whatever. You know, I like writing little songs with my guitar and I like drawing cartoons. But it's really hard to know. I look at everybody's life and I'm like, who is happy? Like, who is doing the thing that if like I reached that, I would be happy. And I guess it's, 
you know, I guess if I was a big radio host like Howard Stern or something and I get to talk to every celebrity. See, here's the, here's the, the flaw I think in your thinking. It's not if I reach that, it's it's the, the journey to get to that is what's going to make you happy. Yeah, yeah. No, because when you reach that, there's always going to be like a better Howard Stern or a better Woody Allen or, you know, this... Yeah. that you're aspiring yeah. to so it's it's really kind of the the journey like I mean sometimes when I started working on this product I was so engaged like for months I was just like loving it I was waking up thinking about it I was falling asleep thinking about it I was like totally engaged in it I'd, I, I'd come up against a wall and I'm like I don't know how to do this and I'd be researching and you know like then you're happy you're, you're just when you're engaged when you're fulfilled I, I feel like that's the happiness and it's not a milestone of you know a million customers or you know yeah someone coming to listen to play the clarinet and you've never played before yeah you know? <laughs> but they'll still listen because you're you yeah yeah no I guess I mean you're right it has to be the process like because even the people who reach the pinnacle like Seinfeld is still doing comedy or yeah. Clint Eastwood is still directing movies so you enjoy doing that thing yeah it's, yeah and, and it's and, less about the fame anymore I mean you know yeah. in, in the beginning it's like you have to eat you have to support yourself but then you get to choose and figure out, okay, you know, do I like this, not like this? And, you know, you, yeah. I just feel like it's, it's, it really is more about kind of your feeling at the time of doing something, like, are you loving it or not? And if you're not, like, what can we change? Yeah, and I do, I mean, I, what, just before my stand-up act, I was like, oh, I, I, and every time it's like, I, I shouldn't do this, I should just drop out, I don't have to do this, why am I doing this myself? But the second I'm on stage, I'm like, oh, okay, they're laughing, I like this. And you light up, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, it's, I love that, and, and so... I know that makes me feel good. And even just doing these interviews, like, I'm like, oh, God, I got to do the interview. Uh, I'm not, I'm sneezing this morning. I can't do it. Uh, it's going to be a disaster. But I like talking to people, partly because I'm just lonely all the time. So it's an excuse to talk to people. Like Conan O'Brien's show is called Conan Needs a Friend. And yeah. I don't, I, it's probably not that a joke. It probably he does want It isn't. It, like, I, I think there's a big um, correlation between, you know, entertainers and entrepreneurs. It's the same. Like, as an entrepreneur, you're on your own all the time. I talk about it all the time. It's like one of the loneliest places on the planet. You, you, nobody knows what you do. Nobody gets what you do. Yeah. Um, you, you really can't talk to people. Like, if you have staff and you're like, oh, I'm really worried about paying the bills this month. They're like putting out their resume to find somewhere else because they think you're going under. If you have vendors, same thing. It's like you, you don't have the connections that you need. Then and, and that's coming back to the mastermind. That's a perfect um, reason for people to to join a mastermind as well Is you know, it's the connection. It's having yeah. someone you can call up who gets you. You can just start in the middle and talk and you don't have to say well this is the backstory I'm an entrepreneur I started doing this and they're like well why don't you have a job you know yeah yeah and that's and that's why I liked even doing the, the zoom stand-up classes over the winter it, it wasn't as much as like oh I got to learn joke techniques which was a bit of that but I just liked checking in every week okay it's my little group of five friends and we're gonna yeah, talk yeah, and yeah. compare notes and then uh and yeah, especially we, in the last year with COVID and everything we became even more isolated so it's it's even more important yeah, exactly. So that that was good. And I left my copywriting job almost six years ago now, I guess. And I didn't because I, I was like, I want to work on my own. I want to be free to travel. I want to work from home. But now I realize, oh, my God, that was my only social interaction. It was fun going in <laughs> every day and at least being around people. Yeah. And so now I'm like that. Was, ugh. And then I sold my condo two years ago. I'm going to be free to travel. I'm going to meet people in hotels. And I stayed in some hotels just in Toronto and Ottawa. And I'm like, nobody's going to talk to me in a hotel. What the hell was I thinking? I'm not, I'm not 20. I'm not backpacking through hostels. And so then I was like, ah. And now I've just been trapped in my parents' basement for the past year. Just like, ah, I'm alone. So, yeah, I'm trying to reach out to people online and hopefully travel again, I guess. But, you know, but the idea of even being some kind of coach, being on stage. And, again, I don't know if I'll ever be that but just something to to go to things and interact with people and stuff yeah and I think bring me some kind of joy I yeah I, I think it's kind of pick one like I mean pick one destination the, the journey is probably going to change a lot as you get yeah. there and you'll probably yeah. end up somewhere else but it, it's just kind of picking the one thing and, and starting towards it um because the whole kind of confused mind says no it's like if you're I don't know whether I'll do this I don't know whether I'll do that well you end up not doing anything because you can't decide yeah that's so I don't like. think the decision is as important as the start is if that no, makes sense no the guy it was interviewing a life coach yesterday and he said something like one step forward is worth a thousand hours of thinking about it or whatever yeah <laughs> and and then I also keep hearing a story of some woman who I, may, I don't know if not the lady boss one but some big entrepreneur coach who started just doing a cooking blog but then everybody's asking oh how do you 
how do you make money with your blog? And then she'd be, and that spiraled into now she's a big entrepreneur coach or something. And you nice. never would have known yeah. unless you started. And sometimes it's the simplest stuff. I was just reading a book, um, a, a woman I met on Facebook who uh, is about to publish a book. So she asked for people to read it beforehand. And it's the simplest thing. It's like how to organize your home. It's like, yeah. you know. And she's like writing a book and she has a huge following and it's like, this is just like simple stuff. I love it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not that complicated. Though. Yeah, we make it complicated. It's like, oh, we have to have all these p things in place and have to do this and we have to know that. And what if they realize that I don't really know everything that I think I know? And, yeah. you know, what if they ask me a question that I don't know the answer to and I'm supposed to be the expert? And... I think what I've realized in my old age is that nobody knows anything. Yeah. Like, like, you know, unless maybe you're a brain surgeon and you probably know a bit more about brains, but politicians know nothing. Coaches don't really know much. They're all, everybody I talk to is playing back the same words that I've heard from other coaches and other students. I'm like, so everybody's, everybody's got the same little pool of knowledge from reading the same couple of books. And, yeah. Yeah. and it, I think it all just boils down to just do it. Like, just do whatever you're doing. There's no magic secret to anything. Like, you know. Yeah. Most people know what to do. You want to start a community, start a Facebook group, and just like, hi, I'm in the group now. Like, yeah. this is it. Like, just, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Come this join is me. It. You want a podcast? Yeah. Press record, and there's your podcast. Like, what do you? There's so That's many. So yeah, I'm. Yeah. Been, I want to start a podcast, and I'm having like so much. Like, well, I don't know what to do. So I bought a mic, and you know, mm. this is the first thing, I guess. <laughs> well, you <even laughs> don't even need it, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, the mic's good. Like even for 10 years, I was researching how to do a podcast. I met some comedian for coffee and he's got a, I'm like, what do you do? How do you get something on iTunes? Like what took, yeah. I even took a, a full day podcast course a few years ago and I still never did it. So finally, about a year ago, I was like, just before the pandemic, I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy web, like podcast hosting and just sign up and figure out how to do this. I'm like, okay, here's the hosting. And okay, what do I have to do to make it like a file that I upload? And took me two days to figure out how to get my logo on the file. So finally I did it. So I was like, okay, I figured it out. Now I've got the thing. So I just had to sit down and do it. So I guess I could teach other people now. But yeah. but, but then other than because that. Like there's, there's probably a ton of other people just like you were. Yeah. You know, not getting anything done because they're stuck at that one point. That's like once they get that, you know, they move on another bit and then get stuck at another point and you can just kind of guide them through all of that. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I was researching for like, couple of years like how do I even record something like this online like should I use a squadcast because it's better quality audio but you can't have a video with it or you know do I have to do it on the phone and I was like I discovered oh now Skype just lets you record in Skype and I'll just do it in Skype it's good enough like it's yeah it's fine it's not going to be 4k video no matter what you use I can even do an interview on my phone I could just be sitting on a porch and doing that and it's like yeah yeah you just have to start cranking it out the technology is exactly. always going to move ahead yeah. your phone yeah. will be better next time and it yep. doesn't it, none of it matters and like that tim ferris was interviewing richard branson it sounded like richard branson was like in a cave somewhere just like you know <laughs> who knows what the wi-fi is like on his island but it doesn't yeah. matter people yeah. are just listening to the content so yeah exactly yeah yeah dan kennedy always says good is good enough yeah um you know if you're waiting for 100 percent perfect you're never going to get anything out so you no. know good is good enough no that's exactly and every day i'm like i'm too tired today i should do tomorrow but i'm like I'll uh, be older tomorrow. Like, at least I look younger today. So it's like, I'm already older now than I was at the beginning of this interview. So it's like... I know, you, you've aged a little, actually, just watching your hair. Just kidding, uh, sorry. God, no, no, it's I probably have. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I know you're busy today. So uh, um, it's funny, I keep assuming you're in a different time zone because the Irish accent, but no. Yeah, just... I know. No, we're actually the same time zone, right? You're... Yeah, it's... Uh, it's... Yeah. yeah, it's 9.57 a.m. Yeah, yes. same here. I've heard Boston's nice because there's this little um, uh, what, what's the airline that uh, Porter Air sort of it's this there's an island airport in Toronto so they've made it so jets can't be on there or maybe they've changed that now but like it sort of has to be shorter range planes so yeah. they they can fly to Washington DC or Boston or yeah. that kind of thing so whenever I fly to like Washington I'll, I'll read their little brochure and they've got like oh it's the article about Boston today and all the little shops and there's a little restaurant area yeah like. yeah it's a very um Boston has a very well Toronto probably not so much Toronto maybe more Montreal but um Boston has a very European feel to it it's not a grid like most of America's on a grid like everything's just like squares yeah, Toronto um, Boston is yeah. like there was cow pats that people like put cement on and made rolls out of them and that's basically yeah. what it is so it's you know very easy to get lost but it's got a nice vibe to it cool and I I guess we could do a whole other podcast about how you wound up in Boston but yeah uh, we could cool. <laughs> <in> next time <laughs> yeah see there we go cliffhanger people <laughs> 
Uh, all right. So then, uh, how would you know what? Do you, what's uh, what's your sales? Like, where would people find you, or what do you want to? Yeah. Leave? So I actually put together like a little training, if that's okay to talk about that. Oh um, yeah. It's free for them. Um, free for you as well, if you'd like to do it. But it's Excellent. it's the whole thing about finding sponsors. So if they go to Connected Sponsors dot com forward slash finding sponsors so c-o-n-n-e-c-t-e-d-s-p-o-n-s-o-r-s dot com all right i'll put the link in the description there we go (laughs) that makes it so much easier um so it's a tactic that i actually learned when i first started my business i joined bni which is business network international and when we had um visitor days uh, one of the taxes tactics they'd ask us to use is follow your checkbook because if um, you were paying money to somebody on a monthly basis for whatever service they were giving you they were probably a good person to have in BNI so I did the same thing from the point of view of sponsorships so if you as the guru are running an event or a podcast or something what are the things that you use to do what you do to do what you're teaching or talking about to your listeners um, that would probably be a good person to, to sponsor your podcast as well so going back into the narrowing down of the niche you know, if they're looking for that transformation, if they're looking to become a comedian, uh, what are some of the resources that would be, would be great to kind of get them started? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Because like, uh, I'm just using Skype now, but if I live stream, I use Ecamm Live and they've got an affiliate program. Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I figure even for, even if they don't want to sponsor me, I could pretend they're my sponsor and just exactly. say. Exactly, it makes you know, it sound for, great. You're not like, sponsored you know, by Ecamm Live. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, you know, and I put their affiliate link yeah, in my thing. So yeah. it's kind of, I mean, and that's what I wonder a lot, too, when I see people on YouTube going, hey, buy blue block or sunglasses, use my promo code. Like, I wonder, are they just sharing an affiliate link or are they getting paid a base amount as well? And then they get a bonus for the affiliate link. I suspect link? initially it's probably an affiliate link, but like you definitely get their attention if you're suddenly sending a bunch of sales to them. And then yeah. you can have the conversation. Well, this is what I'm doing with my affiliate link, but let's talk about some serious money here, you know? Yeah, yeah, like at least something I can rely on or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, there would be Game yeah. Live. I don't know what I could, you know, I could, if I'm taking comedy classes, I could say, do you want to sponsor it? Um, there's something called TubeBuddy or something, some kind of thing I've got hooked up to my YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and maybe the products I use, like, oh, I use this microphone from this company. Or, exactly, yeah. Or, I mean, I've got Amazon affiliate links and, uh, you know, like an Amazon influencer page, I could just say, and I use, like anything I use that's on Amazon, I could say there. And it's yeah. like, not, and none of this is going to be a lot of money because you get like, you know, one, maybe some, maybe one percent commission for Amazon on your thing. Like, for sale. yeah, Amazon's probably not going to pay you a lot, but there are companies that will, you know. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if somebody's looking, um, you could do it yourself, like create a, like, like if I want to be a comedian, which I don't think I'd be good at it, but if I, I, I did. You would be. You're funny. Oh, really? I don't yeah. know. You'd be surprised. I'm actually quite introverted, so, you know, it take a lot to get me up there on stage. Well, that's. But, you know, like how to become a comedian and your resources for that could be affiliate links to you need to get this thing or that thing or whatever it is. Yeah, that you yeah. Need, you know? yeah, it's not a bad idea. That's why I keep thinking if I'm going to have a topic for my podcast or YouTube show or whatever, it it should it, it would be great if it was something that lent itself to sales. Like, okay, I'm doing yeah. a travel show. Now it's okay, travel agents or, or if yeah, the pet yeah. show, okay, all the dog food companies would sponsor yeah. me. Yeah. But just general life stuff is tough. But I mean, there's stuff like, you know, even Tony Robbins courses have affiliate links. And, and for things like that, if you sell one course, you probably get half the money. And so here's 500. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's tough. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, it's I'll I'll start thinking. Uh, and there if any sponsors are listening, you can come sponsor me. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Great. All right. So we'll go to. Uh, all right. What's that link again? One more time. Sponsor- uh, so connectedsponsors.com forward slash finding sponsors. Cool. And that's your is is that the name of your company? Your website? Connected, Connected Spons- sponsors is is my company. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, everybody go there. And if you talk to Sheila, tell her I sent you. So she'll be like, oh, this guy's sending me lots of people. Yeah. I'm going to send up something. That's Sparky. He's a great guy. <laughs> Sparky. Yes. I, I, I did look up SparkySpark.com because like MarkyMark.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's from Boston. Uh, but somebody's got that. Somebody's got it. Oh, everything. no. <laughs> but I got, I got Spark the Genius. So I guess I just got to stick with that. And There you go. And whatever, you know, I mean, there's there's sillier celebrity names out there, like Charlemagne the God, like what? <laughs> but he's and Megan B. Stallion, even pronounced the, but she puts an extra E in it. Like, yeah. it's not it's not stopping them from doing anything. Cardi B. Yeah. And she can't have Cardi B on Instagram. So she's I am Cardi B. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much. Have a good day in Boston. Thank you. It was uh, great being on here. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. No problem. I'll figure out how to stop recording now. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs>